for West Brom. It was a five-goal thriller at Molyneux, but Sam Allardyce picked up his first three points as the baggy boss. Brighton beating Leeds. They've struggled for end product this season, but they didn't today. They took three points at Ellen Road and West Ham did the same at the London Stadium. Antonio with the goal to separate them and Burnley. Chelsea just won the West London derby against Fulham and later on, really looking forward to this one, it's Leicester against Southampton at the King Power Stadium. So let's show you the Premier League table. As far as tonight's just the two teams we've just watched are concerned, Chelsea before this game, they were 10th in the table. They're up to 7th, but more significantly, they're only three points off of top four. So Frank will feel relieved for that in itself. As for the bottom half of the table, Fulham remain where they were before, and that is in the bottom three. They are four points off Burnley, who are just above them, in uh, just above the drop zone. And of course, with both Brighton and West Brom picking up three points today, Fulham will be disappointed not to have taken anything from this game. But lots of discussion. In the second, good goal. Took it ever so well because he knew that he had to get over it. It fell for him nicely. We'll have a look at Fulham in a moment, perhaps at their deficiencies again here. But certainly from a Chelsea point of view, when it drops to Mason Mount, first of all, getting over that. Make sure you get right on top of that ball, and he hits it beautifully. Fulham could have done more out to stop the cross. Yeah, I think the keeper will take a little bit of criticism, but I'm not too sure what else he can do. And it's going over his head. He can't let it go. He he can't catch it. He, and he can't let it go, so he has he, to have a... Can he tip it over his own bar or not? Uh, I'm not too sure. I think the ball's going over his head. It'd be disappointing he's put it back in the middle of the goal. He'd like it to have gone a bit wider. And it's a good finish from Mason Mount. It's a good hit. Really when you look good back hit. at that, Mason Mount has an awful lot of space around him. You can't give a player like him time and space, can you? Huh? Yeah, I think that, again, obviously they're a man down and there's a little bit of space. There is a bit of room. I, I think when, they, when you see the cross coming in, naturally you get you get drawn to maybe back towards your goalkeeper a little bit and then he flaps it straight straight down into the path of Mason Mount and it's one that it's one that they probably couldn't do enough about in the end. I just felt they could have stopped the cross. Tete's a fast, he's a quick player. Get on top of Chilwell, stop him from standing that back up and then the goalkeeper's decision. Could he have done something else other than flapping it straight down to Mason Mount? Possibly, yeah. Well, shall we have a look at the other key incident in the game, Al? And this was the red card. No question marks here at all? Well, I don't think Aspas Quaretta does him any favours. But it's the aggression in the challenge. It's reckless. And the way Aspas Quaretta goes over and rolls over and everything else, but it's a reckless challenge, yeah. endangering the opponent. I don't think he gives the ref any other option. And really, Fulham, it done for them. I think. Yeah. But, uh, up until that point, they had just missed a great chance, which they needed to score. But I don't think anything better than perhaps getting a point was anything else Fulham could hope for. And I think the second half, they had to drop off, they had to defend deep, and it was just a matter of time. Was Chelsea going to get that goal? From Chelsea's perspective, why was it not the best performance? Why are they looking just so uninspiring at the moment? I think the questions that were put to, to Mason Mount about pressure and were you feeling the pressure going into the game? I think, I think it's quite obvious they were. They, felt, they looked, they played like a team that aren't playing quickly enough and with enough confidence. Um, and so uh, they looked like they were feeling the weight of, of, of what's been going on recently going into this game. Um, they just about got over the line, Seaman. It wasn't convincing, it wasn't great. Do you know what, in that Chelsea dressing room now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because... They got the job done, but Fulham, as you can see, packing white shirts back behind the ball, happy to let them have shots from distance, Al. Yeah, and it, as I said earlier, it was laboured, wasn't it? And they didn't have the, perhaps the, they don't think they had the player until late on in the, in, in the second half that could go past players. Yeah. And we've seen Werner and Hudson Odoi come on and they actually started taking the Fulham defenders on. That's what you need to do when you're playing against a packed defence and 10 men. And this is the pace of Werner. Is you see everything what's, what's good and bad about him at the moment. There was no way Fulham were going to get back. And you didn't fancy he was going to score, did you, no. And The way no. he's playing at the moment? No, no, not quite. Um, so, look, it's, again, it's, it's a game that they had to win. And they've done it. They've got through it. You know, the best teams do that. The best teams are able to not always play at their, at their finest, but get over the line. Chelsea have shown that they can certainly do that tonight. But, uh, but the red card decision before half-time ruined Fulham's chances of building on their good performance at Spurs. It was always going to be 
a pretty long and, 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 and tough second period for them. So it's job done for Chelsea and Frank Lampard, but next we move... There's all three points today. Yeah, it was, a, it was a massive game for us, you know. We know the run we've been through recently, it's been tough. We've uh, had to really look at ourselves. Um, obviously, it was good to get the win against Morecambe. That was a kind of step to, to getting wins under our belt again. And obviously, today was a tough, tough game, and, and you have to wait until late in the second half to score a goal. Um, so it's been tough. We've had to really dig deep as a team. Uh, all together, we've been together throughout it all, showing really good character tonight, and, and obviously got the win. That's the main thing. Did it feel a pressurised environment coming into the game? Um, we we all know that we needed a win. Um, we all put that pressure on ourselves. Um, there's definitely pressure for us to perform. We you look at the change room, the the quality we have in the change room. We know we need to win games, and um, it's been difficult, as I said, last couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, we put that pressure on ourselves to, to turn up and win tonight, um, and against a good team that's been playing well. So um, yeah, we're very pleased with that. How difficult were they to break down, and was being patient key, particularly in the second half? Yeah, they had five at the back and that's always difficult. Um, you kind of feel like you're camped in and you're trying to keep the ball and um, you feel like you're getting impatient at times and start forcing it and that's what kind of sets in. Um, but I thought we did well tonight in that. Uh, we stayed patient, we tried to play. Um, obviously with them having a the man sent off kind of helps us as well coming up into the second half. Um, and then it, we kind of got better and better and, and nicked the goal. So yeah, it's, uh, I'm obviously very pleased with that. Pleased and very relieved Mason Matt was there. Of course, he hit the crossbar in the first half and he scored.